Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Hubble back again for another NFL season. We're kicking off NFL regular season 100. Yes, the 100th season of the National Football League kicks off this Thursday, September 5th. And that first game, we're going to be breaking down here in just a few moments as I want to let you guys know that I am going to be back doing all 16 or all 17 regular season weeks of football, all 16 games for any one particular team, the entire playoffs, the Pro Bowl, and the Super Bowl. And uh, there's no better way to get things started than to kind of recap the preseason. Uh, only three teams finished 4 and 0. Everybody else was pretty, you know, average. Just some preseason stuff, not really much to talk about. Uh, and I couldn't really keep up with all the teams other than the Giants, and I know that we made some surprising cuts, so I'm not very happy about a lot of a lot of the decisions the Giants made coming out of the preseason, but that remains to be seen. There is one guy who's caught my eye. Obviously, it's Daniel Jones. Uh, I don't foresee him touching the field here in week one. Uh, it's going to be a couple of weeks before we get to see DJ in some prime action. Guys like Dwayne Haskins are going to have to wait to get on the field, but uh, uh, when he gets on the field, I have very low expectations for Dwayne Haskins. But in Arizona, Kyler Murray, number one overall pick, he's got a lot riding on his shoulders. He's got to take a very, very bad Arizona Cardinals team, and he's got to turn that franchise around pretty much single-handedly because there's not a lot of help around him. And um, with that being said, you know, when you look at these divisions, a lot of the leaders have kind of changed for for reasons uh, that I'm, I'm sure I'll get into when I discuss individual games, but you look across the divisions, the Cleveland Browns are front runners in the AFC North. Uh, you've got a kind of a mix-up in the AFC South. Nobody really knows what's going to happen there. The AFC East, we have a potential new contender for that number one spot. Don't, don't throw stones yet, but I'm just kind of floating that idea out there. You know, the AFC West, I still think, is kind of a wide-open division between the, the top two teams there. The NFC North, I think, is a, a two-way race there. The AFC South, you know, at any given time, the, the three best teams in that division can, can run away with it and take off. AFC East, or excuse me, NFC East, always wide-open division. You never really know going into the year who's going to come out with it. I think there's pretty much two candidates you can immediately, or almost immediately, write off in the uh, NFC East and the NFC West you've got two very solid teams sitting at the top and it's going to be I think a matter of division games to see who comes out of that division but getting into brass tacks we get to start our season our 2019-2020 NFL regular season with the longest standing rivalry in the National Football League the Green Bay Packers will Head to Soldier Field in Chicago to take on the Chicago Bears Thursday, September 5th, 2019 at 8.20 p.m. This game will be on Fox, Amazon Prime Video, and uh, some other platform. I think NFL Network. But, so the Bears, they come off an absolutely disappointing way to end their season. The double doink, as Chris Collinsworth so gloriously coined it. And the Packers, they missed the playoffs. They fired Mike McCarthy. It's Aaron Rodgers' show. They've got some talent on defense. Uh, if Aaron Rodgers is healthy, he's got he's Devontae Adams. He's got uh, <clears throat> Jimmy Graham on that offense. I think they have a couple of underrated wide receivers. That running back room is still kind of a revolving door. But, you know, they, they've got a solid enough offensive line. So if they can keep Aaron Rodgers upright. That's a solid team to watch in the NFC. The the Bears, on the other hand, we pretty much know what we're going to get out of them. Khalil Mack, Eddie Jackson, uh, the guys on that defense, they are just an outstanding group. And then Mitch Trubisky is looking to take that next step this year. Allen Robinson is, of course, his number one guy. Uh, he's going to be turning the ball and handing, turning around and handing the ball off to Tariq Cohen, I should say. And, of course, Cohen's a... A Swiss Army knife, as we like to call guys like him. He can do it all. He really is one of those guys that you can trot on the field in any situation and always feel comfortable with the ball in his hand. But, of course, the kicking game. They just signed that Pinheiro guy, 
and, and, and there's there's question marks there. Cody Parkey left them with an extremely awful taste in their mouth. They make that kick. They beat Philadelphia. Who knows how far they go? So really, this is going to be, to me, their biggest test through their first five weeks. I mean, you've got Green Bay coming into town. You've got Aaron Rodgers, who's got to prove something. And this, this, neither of these teams obviously want to lose this rivalry game. It's the 100th season. This is the longest rivalry in the in the NFL. All those factors. And just a part of me, you know, I, I rewatched Week One of last season earlier today, and it just it dawned on me that the Bears are a great football team. And that was their first game together. This unit that we're looking at coming into the Thursday. This was their first uh, foray together on a field. Matt Nagy's first head coaching experience. But even with all that talent, like they couldn't keep Aaron Rodgers from doing what Aaron Rodgers does. And on one leg, this guy is is a beast. Aaron Rodgers is just something. He's a, a kind of quarterback that we have never seen in the NFL, frankly. And I don't think we'll ever see a guy quite like him again the moxie the toughness the ability to go in there in any situation and give your team the best ability to win there's just guys that don't come along like Aaron Rodgers they're they're few and far between you've got your Tom Brady's he's a one-dimensional kind of guy your Patrick Mahomes he's he's a kind of guy that once you figure him out I'm sure defenses are gonna be able to react just fine and they're gonna be bringing him back down to earth in a very quick manner but a guy like Aaron Rodgers, he can put up enough points to beat you, and he can he, he can he can blow you out of the water if he wants to, with relatively unknown people around him. He's got like Marquez Valdez Scantling catching passes from him. Who the well, I mean, I know who he is, but like most casual fans will be looking at a guy like Marquez Valdez Scantling and saying, "What in the hell? Who is this guy?" But you know, he's a talented kid. Um, and, and, I mean, you just, it's so hard to write off Aaron Rodgers. It's like in, in, in December and in January telling somebody, looking somebody in the face, saying the Patriots aren't going to win a playoff game. They, you just don't do that because, like, that's not smart. <laughs> and it's not smart to count out Aaron Rodgers against the Chicago Bears. And on the opposite side of the ball, the Bears, I don't want to say they have question marks, but just the way they... The way they ended last season, it's got to be weighing big, big time on this entire organization. No matter which way you slice it, there was unfinished business left on the field at Soldier Field last year, and it's gonna be, it's gonna take a lot mentally to get that team, you know, wound back down in order to focus and to kind of take this new season as a separate entity than the one they finished last year. Uh, against the Eagles and obviously it's it's easier said than done and this group has a long way to go to be back into the playoffs obviously every one of these teams has to play 16 games and then you've got to count on everybody else putting you in a position uh, to to be a top team and I just for some reason I have this really really heavy gut feeling that the Green Bay Packers are going to win this game and it's the Aaron Rodgers factor. It's the kind of retool defense. And they've just got uh, they got new coaches coming out the wazoo in Green Bay. And, I mean, this team, to me, looks like one that is poised for a, in an enormous bounce back. I feel like they have an opportunity to kind of unseat some of your NFC powerhouses and maybe take a number one or a number two seed. It's not exactly out of the question. And obviously, nothing's out of the question yet. It's only September, but I got my money on Green Bay in this game. I just feel like they're going to be able to to take this and run with it, and I don't know how far they can go. You know, obviously we got to take Aaron Rodgers' health into consideration, but I'm all in on the Green Bay Packers in the opener against Chicago on Thursday. I've got them as my pick. Next up, we're going to be talking about an, a very interesting matchup in the AFC, the Tennessee Titans. Go to Cleveland to face the Browns. Obviously, much has been made about the Cleveland Browns. They acquired Odell Beckham in the offseason. 
They've got Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, who was going to miss this game in the next seven weeks. But they've got Baker Mayfield, a great offensive line, a young defense, which many people say is the strength of that team, which is incredible when you look at the talent they have on offense. And they're going against a Titans team that, you know, there's a, a ton of question marks about. Going in to last season, I thought the Titans were going to be a really good team to put your money on in the AFC. Obviously, they had to overcome Houston and they had to overcome Indianapolis. And they couldn't do that. But I felt like that team was poised to be a lot better than they were. And Marcus Mariota, um, he, he, I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure if he will be starting this game. But if not, that raises a ton more questions than it answers. And, and I really wish I, I knew the situation at quarterback in Tennessee right now. But all I know is in that last preseason game, Marcus Mariota played badly. And if that's anything to show for how he's going to come out and play against this really solid Cleveland defense, then I just think the Browns are going to walk all over the Titans. I don't even think this game's going to be close. And, I mean, regardless of the quarterback, I feel like Cleveland's got this one in the bag. I've got them winning over the Tennessee Titans and starting 1-0 for the first time in what feels like, I don't know, several thousand years. But next up, we're going to bounce over to the NFC. We're going to talk about the Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, the, the big story coming into this game is Dwayne Haskins will not start. He is not the starter in Washington. Uh, the Washington team obviously was derailed in an extremely heartbreaking fashion last year when they lost Alex Smith. It's an unfortunate situation, but things out of your control happen. Uh, they were poised to make a deep playoff run, if not win uh, a, a number one or two spot in the NFC. It's, it was very plausible at that moment when Alex Smith went down in that game against uh, Houston. And now, you know, there's there's a lot of questions in Washington. And most of them reside in the offense. Trent Williams, he's out. Uh, who knows how long that contract negotiation will will stand for. And uh, in Philly, there's not so many questions. You really know what you're going to get out of that group. You've got a solid offense. I feel like that's their weak spot in their defense. You pretty much know you're going to get a, a great pass rush and some solid outside help on the back end and a couple of good safeties. And that defense is nothing that you should take lightly. But with all that being said, I feel like this group in Philadelphia is altogether a more talented team and I feel like Washington because it's a division game they're gonna put up a bit of a fight but in the end it's gonna be all for naught Philly's gonna end up winning this game it's it's gonna be a, a closer one maybe uh, maybe 10 points final margin but uh, I've got Philly taking the win over the Washington Redskins next up in the American Football Conference we've got the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Miami Dolphins Oh boy, Miami, 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 Miami. Kenny Stills, Laramie Tunsil just got traded to Houston. They just traded Kiko Alonso. They've got Ryan Fitzpatrick starting over Josh Rosen. And this is a bad football team. It is a bad football team. And if they decide to tank for Tua Tagovailoa coming out of this draft, it is a bad football team with him on it they have a long ways to go to even be considered a wild card team in the AFC and just the addition of a guy like Tua Tagovailoa if that is their route and they decide to pursue him in this next year's draft they have to put some serious pieces around Tua because sure he's a talented kid but I mean, you just can't get your guy beat up like that. And this Miami team is going to get their quarterbacks beat up. And Baltimore, they've got Earl Thomas now. That defense looks sharp. They've got Lamar Jackson, who's poised to potentially be the second running back, to, or excuse me, the second quarterback to ever run for 1,000 yards in a season. You know, the kind of stuff Lamar Jackson did down the stretch there uh, at the end of last year was very impressive. In all honesty, it was very impressive. I know much is 
Much is joked upon with his ability to run the football, and you know he's a running back who plays quarterback. And it, when Lamar Jackson is a guy wide open on third and ten, he's going to take off and run. I, I don't really much care for the like. I like to joke about it, but I don't really much care for the jokes because the kid's talented, and uh, he's going to walk into Miami, and he's going to light them up. It's not even going to be close. The Dolphins are a bad team. They might very well go 0-16 this year. They are a bad group. And they have no upside in the foreseeable future. And Baltimore is going to show you why on Sunday when they mop the floor with Miami. Back in the NFC, the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Carolina Panthers. So finally, we get to talk about a team of some great interest. The runner-ups in the Super Bowl, the defending NFC champions, the Los Angeles Rams. And you want to talk about having a bad taste left in your mouth if you're the Chicago Bears? Oh boy. When you go into the Super Bowl in a game you can definitely, definitely win because you were an immensely talented group and you put up three points in a game where you were only outscored by ten. That is just absolutely heartbreaking. And for the longest time in that game, it was only 10 to 7. So LA was really never out of it. Jared Goff throws a bad pick at the wrong time, and that game is over. You know, a couple things here or there change. They get Todd Gurley more involved in that offense, and the LA Rams are Super Bowl champions right now. But it's not to beat. The Patriots, you just don't beat the Patriots. Come on, unless you're the New York Giants or the Philadelphia Eagles, you do not beat the Patriots in that game. And the LA Rams showed why it takes a lot more than just supreme talent to beat New England. You have to have the correct mindset when you go into that game. This team was too young. This team was too inexperienced. This team had not had that kind of Super Bowl caliber uh, quarterback going into that game. Much credit to Jared Goff. He led them there, but he's not a kind of Super Bowl caliber guy like your Drew Brees, your Tom Brady's. Your Aaron Rodgers, your Ben Roethlisberger's, those guys, Super Bowl caliber quarterbacks. Jared Goff, not quite there. And the LA Rams, for all intents and purposes, are going to be regressed in some form from the, the, the version of the LA Rams we saw last year. But don't take that as necessarily a bad thing. Just because you regress doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop being great. And I feel like they're probably going to make it back to the playoffs, not as a number one seed, but they'll probably get in there as a wild card. But uh, I mean, they're going to be pissed off, obviously, for the way their season ended. And they, they get to face a Carolina Panthers team that, to me, is not a talented group. And they've got Cam Newton, who is currently injured. Whether people in Carolina want to admit it or not, Cam Newton is dealing with an injury. And that makes the Carolina Panthers very vulnerable. And I just don't see the talent there at wide receiver, on defense. I mean, you've got Christian McCaffrey, but he's a one-trick horse. He's not going to be able to carry this offense by himself. The LA Rams are going to walk into Carolina and lay a whooping down on the Panthers. That game's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be fun to watch. Speaking of games that won't be pretty, but will be fun to watch. Let's bounce to Kansas City Chiefs visiting the Jacksonville Jaguars. This game is going to be fun because you got Nick Foles in that offense and you've got a still pretty solid defense there in Jacksonville. They just keep adding pieces. They're not really losing any, any key players. In, a, in, in Kansas City, we know what to expect out of the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean... Another heartbreaking playoff loss for the Kansas City Chiefs. They go to, Fo or excuse me, they don't go to Foxborough, but they host the Patriots in the AFC Championship. They've got that game won. They have that game won. And D Ford jumps offside, and it renders an interception by Tom Brady. Moot. And then the Patriots do what the Patriots do. They walk right down. They score a touchdown. Game set match, Brady and company win their sixth. But we know what to expect out of Kansas City. A high-flying offense and a solid enough defense. 
and in Jacksonville, they don't have the talent to combat what Kansas City's bringing. The Chiefs are going to win this game, and they're probably going to win it in, in very, very quick fashion. <laughs> this game's probably going to be over by halftime, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're visiting the Jaguars on, on Sunday, expect to, uh, if you're a Chiefs fan, you're going to stay all four quarters, but if you're a Jags fan, you might want to get a refund on those tickets as soon as you can. Then in the NFC, we've got the Atlanta Falcons visiting the Minnesota Vikings. Kirk Cousins is not even an average quarterback. There, I said it. I said it. And the Vikings are a below-average team. I said it. They're not even the third-best team in their own division. I said it. They are a not-so-great team. The Atlanta Falcons, however, have Calvin Ridley... Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, and a pretty solid defense. Dare I say the Atlanta Falcons make a playoff push? Dare I say the Atlanta Falcons win the NFC <clears throat> South? Dare I say they may win the NFC in general? I like this team. Always have liked the Falcons. Always have liked Matt Ryan's Falcons. This team will be flying high. The Dirty Birds will be flying high, and they are going to go to Minnesota and win. I, you know, I've got a lot of road teams winning. I really do. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. They put some bad teams hosting games. Nothing I can do about that. And I think the Falcons are no exception, and they're going to go on the road and win. Then in the AFC, it's Buffalo and... Uh, New York, so you've got the uh, Bills taking on the Jets. Okie doke. So obviously we know what is to be uh, expected from New York, I suppose. Le'Veon Bell, Sam Darnold. That offense is supposed to put up 5 million points a game. That defense allegedly is so great. But the Buffalo Bills are bad. <laughs> Just this, it is how it is. Josh Allen's an incredibly, incredibly talented young man. But that team is not very good. And it's going to show. And I don't think the Jets necessarily find their, their clicking spot yet. And I don't think Le'Veon Bell is a great game. But they're going to do just enough to beat the Bills, I suppose. Or I surmise, rather. And it's going to be just, you know, that kind of a deal. That kind of a deal. Indeed. So let us work our way to the first of the afternoon games with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Seattle Seahawks. Okay, so Cincinnati, I really like this team. I, I don't feel like they're an incredibly bad group, but I still think they're the third best team in their division. I mean, there's a case to be made for fourth best, but... I still think they're better than the Pittsburgh Steelers at this moment in time. But Seattle, Jadavian Clowney just came. Jadavian Clowney just came to Seattle. I'm sorry, Cincinnati, but for that factor alone, and then you, you, you want to bring in the factor of Russell Wilson, and that speedy, quick offense. Cincinnati's got no chance in this game. Seattle's taking the win. That's not even up for debate. And then here's a game where I feel like me and some viewers might have a disagreement or two. The Indianapolis Colts visiting the Los Angeles Chargers. Andrew Luck retired abruptly at the end of the preseason. Naturally, you'd say, well, good Lord, Jacoby Brissett and his $30 million deal have no chance to hang with the Chargers. Sorry, but you're wrong because not only do they have a chance to hang with the Chargers, they're going to beat the Los Angeles Chargers to open this season up. I still think the team in Indy is incredibly talented. All Jacoby Brissett has to do is throw the football. He's got guys out there that are going to make plays for him. He's just got to be able to deliver the rock. That's just as simple as it is. And as much as I love Phillip Rivers, you know, no Melvin Gordon to start the season. He's still holding out. So that's a big factor. The defense, you know, in uh, in Los Angeles still looks really good. But I don't think that they're necessarily the better unit when you compare against Indianapolis' defense. 
So I'm going to pick Indy in this game, even with Jacoby Brissett starting at quarterback. Fight me if you want. I don't really care. Next up, San Francisco at Tampa Bay. Not much I really want to say about this game. I mean, you got Jimmy Garoppolo back in San Francisco. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to give the edge to San Fran. Tampa Bay, they're not a great team. Uh, Jameis Winston, not a great quarterback. And that's, it sucks to say, but he really isn't. Neither of those quarterbacks that came out that, yeah, I forget what year it was, 2015, I think, uh, Winston and Mariota, neither of them have really panned out to be what they were expected to be. And Jameis, I think, is the worst of the two. And San Francisco is going to get a big opening season, regular season win here in week one. Next. Where am I at? Okay. <laughs> Detroit and Arizona. Okay. So, you heard what I had to say about Arizona to start the uh, to start this video. They're bad. They're bad. Kyler Murray's really good, but they're bad. They're a bad team, man. They're a bad team. Detroit is a solid team. I really like Detroit. I'll never count out Matt Stafford in a, in a shootout if it needs to be, but I don't think it will need to be. I think the Detroit Lions are a really fly-under-the-radar type of team. Depending on the play of either Chicago or Green Bay, they can sneak into the playoffs. I mean, who's to say that team or that division doesn't send three teams to the playoffs? Be real with me. It can happen. I've got Detroit winning this game. Next, we have a game that I have obviously vested interest in. As most of you know, I am a New York Giants fan. For better or worse or indifferent, I am a New York Giants fan. And uh, obviously, I know this, this team, these two teams, this rivalry very intimately. The Dallas Cowboys might not be playing with Ezekiel Elliott. By the time this video gets published, he might already have signed his deal. I guess that's just uh, the way the the way the league works, and we're gonna have to find out. But as of this moment, Ezekiel Elliott remains unsigned, still in Cabo training. Dak Prescott looks to take a step back. Amari Cooper, I think, is grossly overrated. This defense gets a lot of talk, a lot of chatter, a lot of blah 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 blah. Leighton Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith, Byron Jones, the Tank. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, blah, 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 the Tyrone Crawford, blah, 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 shut up. Sick and tired of hearing about the Dallas Cowboys. They are an overrated team. And you want to know how they're overrated. You will find out how they're overrated because they're going to be beaten in Jerry World by the New York football giants. The Odell Beckhamless giants. The Giants with no defense. The Giants without Golden Tate. The Giants with Daniel Jones on the bench. Eli Manning is going to duel Dak Prescott, and he's going to outperform him on this day. If Zeke plays, Saquon Barkley puts up better numbers. If Zeke doesn't play, Saquon Barkley outshines Tony Pollard. It's going to be that kind of game. Everyone's going to be caught off guard. This might not necessarily be reminiscent of the directions of both of these teams this season, but I feel like the New York Giants are going to come out and expose the Cowboys for the team that they actually are. An overrated group that has too much talk and not enough to back it up. The talent is there, but I don't think they are the better team. I know the New York Giants intimately. I know every player. I know their strengths and their weaknesses. This team is not a bad team just be frank with me look at the roster up and down you cannot tell me it's a bad football team and they're going to beat the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday that is my guarantee that is my lock of the week that is my lock of the week the New York Giants over the Dallas Cowboys god damn what have I done okay Sunday night football we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers visiting the New England Patriots now, obviously, everybody likes to make a lot out of this matchup. It's Pittsburgh, New England, and Roethlisberger, and Brady. Fact is, the Steelers don't have Lev Bell. The Steelers don't have Antonio Brown. They've got a glorified slot receiver playing number one, and they've got a glorified backup playing starting running back. This team is going to be bad. Everybody's telling me they're a Super Bowl contender. 
Why do you have that opinion in your head? It is wrong. It is bad. Get it out of your head. It is a bad thought to have. The Steelers are bad. The Patriots are the defending champs. On their home field, unveiling their sixth banner, they will not lose. Simple as that. Monday night, we've got a couple of games. Let me just see which one is earlier. Okay, so the earlier game on Monday night is the Houston Texans visiting the New Orleans Saints. Okay, so many of you might know this, but to my left, where I am sitting, I have two jerseys hanging on my wall. Two of them. One's in a frame, but that's not counted. That's my signed Saquon Barkley jersey. That is not to be trifled with. To my left, I have Sterling Shepard, and I have Deshaun Watson. Those are my two favorite players other than Aaron Rodgers, whose jersey is on the way. But those are my two favorite players right now in football, other than Barkley, other than Rodgers. So I have an unequivocal love for Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. I went to a Texans game last year. I sat second row. I love this team. I do. They've made some interesting moves this offseason, shipping to Davian Clowney away, trading for Kenny Stills, acquiring Laramie Tunsil. They got a, a some linebacker, Joe Schmo. Uh, I mean, they've made a couple of moves. But on the other side of the field is Drew Brees. Can't guard Mike. Michael Thomas. That amazing defense. It's a tough matchup. I really think it is. I mean... Look, just look at the offense. Break positions down for me. Quarterback, Breeze, Watson. I mean, me personally, even though, as much as I love Deshaun, it's not a question. Drew Breeze is better. But then when you look at receivers, it gets interesting. DeAndre Hopkins versus Michael Thomas. Probably the top two best receivers in football. Just depends on where you want to place them. And I... <laughs> And that's so tough because both of them are incredible receivers. Both of them do not drop passes. They're so fun to watch. Excuse me, but uh, I just got to give this game to New Orleans. I really do. I really do. Uh, Houston, I feel like they've made some interesting moves, as I've said, but I don't think that they're enough to get over a team as great as the Saints. The Saints are ready to finally... And the three years of misery they've endured and finally break through and get to a Super Bowl. So I feel like uh, the Saints are going to kick that off on the right foot and beat the Houston Texans. Okay, so the last game of the week, Monday Night Football, the Denver Broncos visiting the Oakland Raiders. <clears throat> Not much I can really say here. I mean, Joe Flacco is Joe Flacco. We know what we're going to get out of him. A completely average, not elite quarterback. Um, and really a team that's kind of... I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what the Denver Broncos are. I don't know what they are. They're weird. They're always weird to me. They've always been a little weird. But one thing I can tell you they're not is good. And the Oakland Raiders are, I don't think, going to be very good. All things considered, people want to say... Oh, they got A.B., so they're immediately a playoff contender, right? No. Not at all. Antonio Brown is one of the most overrated wide receivers that's ever stepped foot on a football field. and um, But they're going to win this game anyway. <laughs> they're going to win this game despite my reservations. And that's really all I got to say about that. I was trying to think of something else to say because I didn't want the last prediction of the week to go, go out with a whimper, but there it is. So that's week one of the 2019 NFL season all predicted your yeah, boy predicted it so just a quick recap of what I got going on I got the Green Bay Packers over the Chicago Bears the Philadelphia Eagles over the Washington Redskins the LA Rams over the Panthers the Falcons over the Vikings the 49ers over the Buccaneers the Lions over the Cardinals the Giants over the Cowboys, the Bengals over the Seahawks. Oh, excuse me, the Seahawks over the Bengals, I apologize. New Orleans over Houston. Cleveland over Tennessee. The Dolphins over Baltimore. Oh, excuse me. Holy cow, I'm all over the place. Baltimore over Miami. Kansas City over Jacksonville. New York Jets over Buffalo. Indianapolis over Los Angeles. New England over Pittsburgh. And Oakland over Denver. There we go. When I say it fast, I don't F it up. So there you have it. 
excuse me, my predictions for week one. It's finally here. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for this Thursday. I cannot wait to throw Red Zone on on Sunday. Football's back, baby. And I am so excited, so excited, so excited. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment down below. Drop a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already because it would greatly help out the channel. And make sure to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time I post a prediction video this regular season. So that's going to do it for me, boy, ho, boy. I hope that you guys enjoy football this week. Make sure to watch on Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. Get that football fix. It, it's back, and it's finally, finally meaningful football. The NFL's 100th season kicks off this Thursday with the Packers and the Bears. That's all for me, guys, and I'll catch you guys next week for Week 2 Predictions. And I will see you guys in the next video.